Hello. Uh, I'm going to do a quick uh, video tutorial on making stairs in the Source Engine. The way that I do it, at least. I find this is a pretty reliable technique. Um, I've just created a, a, a quick dev texture box here, and I'm going to, uh, I guess, make the base of my texture, or base of the, the, the stair. Oh my god. Okay, well, we've already broken hammer. That's good. Okay. Um, so we have a, a ramp. This is a 2 to 3 ramp, uh, meaning for every time it goes 2 squares up, it goes 3 squares uh, across. This is sort of a, a typical ramp valve. It uses this a lot, um, and it's also pretty close to real-life standards. Uh, 1 to 2, like this, is also acceptable, um, but 2 to 3 is what you'll see most often. Um, and it also sort of, uh, it, it, since it's steeper than uh, 1 to 2, it will make for a smaller staircase um, and every once in a while you'll maybe be able to get away with one to one like this a 45 degree angle um, those those can look uh, kind of out of place in a lot of situations anyways I have this uh, base ramp and to turn it into stair first I'm going to texture this as no draw and then what I'm going to do is make a single stair I'm going to make this 8 by 12 And vertex that in. So now I just have a single stair. And I'm going to figure out like what texture do I want here. Um, and just like stair. Sure, that's a stair texture. Um, and then rotate this so it's looking correct. Is that right? I feel like there's a whip to this texture that I should see that I'm not seeing. I think this is the facing the wrong way. Yeah, there we go. Now I can see the whip. And then uh, using shift and arrow keys to nudge, I get the next one in place. Also note that I have texture lock on. Uh, if I don't have texture lock on, then you'll see the textures get out of whack. We don't want that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just get four stairs into place. And I'm going to tie all those together as a funk detail. That way I can kind of move all of them around at once. Then go to objects, or no, solids. And now I'm going to uh, scramble the textures a little bit. You'll note that if I look at this from the side, um, all the textures are the same and they line up. And that looks really unnatural, uh, especially when you have a lot more stairs. Um, so one technique that I like to do is to... Um, I'm using Shift L to turn on and off texture lock. You can see it toggling up here as I press it. Um, I can turn texture lock off, shift something over, turn it on, shift it back. And now you can already see the scrambling start to happen. I'm going to do this again. Um, as such. And now all four of these stairs have sort of different texture alignments. Then I can copy paste, make some more stairs, and I can just shift this whole group over, scramble that a little bit, and now I have, oh, I can just tie these together as one big funk detail, and then move that over, tie all that together, and voila, I have stairs. Um, you'll know that there's kind of a ugly edge here. What I could do is if I wanted to expose the edge of the stair, I can go in and take whatever texture this is and start applying it manually. I don't really want to do that. Uh, I'm going to make a nice trim for this instead so I can uh, nudge these in a little bit. Vertex edit the bottom of the stairs into the shape that I want. For this trim, and I don't really know what texture these are going like what these would be for an art pass. I'm not going to bother figuring it out, um, but I can go ahead and, and tie those as funk detail as well. I could also tie that back to the the whole stair, but anyways, now we have a nice trim, and uh, that sort of hides the edge of the stair. It makes it look a little bit nicer. Maybe we would um, want this trim to be a little bit thinner. I made it four units, we could make it two. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. Okay, 
Um, now I want to get into making 45 degree stairs because this is a little tricky. So I'm going to duplicate the base, get over here, and um, to make this 45 degrees, I'm going to take that, move it up, and move that, and now it's at a diagonal. Um, but figuring out the slope of this is going to be a little bit tricky uh, because you can see, like in the 2D view, this is still a 2 to 3, um, but since it's happening in both the X and Y, instead of, in this case, it's just going in the Y, it's going X and Y, so it's not really the same, and I've done the math on it, and essentially, if this is a 2 to 3, we can think of this slope as 1 to 1 to 1, so between here and here, we're going up 1 over 1 and over 1 in X, Y, and Z, so I'm calling it 1 to 1 to 1, um, and then we basically just do what we did before. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, make a stair. No, I don't want to merge that. Um, and I, th I think that, no, that's not right. Move that in there, and then grab that, merge it. There we go. So now I have the one stair again. I'm just going to borrow the texture from over here. If I hold Alt and right click, it sort of applies it. So now you can see this is oriented to face, and it's touching that, and then that's going to get up there. And I'm using this lip as sort of the basis for aligning the texture. If I was to use like this as set to top, and move down, the lip would be like a little bit off. It still looks fine, but I'm going to do it that way, because that's just kind of what I'm feeling. Um, and then uh, detail that. Shift arrow nudge. Oh, I forgot to turn texture lock on before I did that. Tie that together. And then I can go and uh Well that didn't shift it a ton. This is looking uh, kind of messy with the way that I'm aligning these textures. But I'm also doing this very quickly. There. Now I have a 45 degree stair. And just to show that this stair and this stair are similar, I can um, I'll HUD this, and I can rotate this back, and you'll see, sort of in this view, that they are almost the the same length. And we can also see that in the 3D view that the slopes are very, very close to being similar. Um, this just makes it like aligned to the source grid a lot better. You also um, important things to know. Um, I actually fucked this up. Um, I want kind of the underside of this to be all no draw. I don't honestly know um, if the bottom of the stair needs to be no draw. Um, I, I don't see why you wouldn't do it, coin on this thing, but you definitely do want the bottom of this to be no draw, um, especially if the stair is a, a uh, world brush underneath and not a detail. Because um, what can happen is, say, you have. Um, a platform down here, and you have a platform up here like this. What can happen is if this is textured, uh, the source engine when you're com when you compile the map won't necessarily know to cull this face underneath. It won't like get rid of it automatically, um, and the source engine also likes to try and smooth the lighting between faces that it thinks um, should be smoothed together. And so what might happen? is it just it ignores the funk details like I have it that that turned off and it'll smooth these faces together and so the lighting um, here will sort of blend into this face and then you'll just have like this weird black blobby shadow extending from the stairs here and from here and it just looks bad um, so if you set this to no draw you're essentially ensuring that that never happens that face underneath the stairs shouldn't exist so if you just get rid of it, um, then you won't have any issues in that regard. Um, I think that's basically everything uh, about how to make stairs. Um, you can experiment with different slopes, so like 
um, if you're working with a rotated section of your map that's actually at a, uh, a one to two grid then you might experiment a bit with trying to figure out like what what's the best slope um, to, to work at to try and emulate sort of the the, uh, the, the correct slope I'm not sure if that makes sense um, that's pretty close anyways um, that's a basic overview of how I do stairs.